Melbourne-based singer-songwriter Brendan McMahon's latest outstanding single, Backroads, the one I just played, is uh, from his recently released sixth solo album entitled As the Road Unfolds. And it is yet another highly accomplished piece of work from this remarkably talented Melbourne-based songsmith and musician. Uh, Amazingly, the album debuted on the iTunes country chart on uh, Friday as the highest-selling album, which is uh, quite remarkable. And uh, Brendan, uh, who originally hails from a small rural farming town in South Australia, has spent four decades honing his considerable musical skills and is certainly one of the most capable artists on the Australian and overseas music scenes. In 2015 and 2016, in collaboration with some renowned Australian session musicians, Brendan released his first two solo albums, Falling to Earth and Marker 758, under the moniker of Satellite Gods. In 2017, after supporting such artists as Boom Crash Opera, The Shantuzis and Russell Morris, he released his CD entitled On This Fine Occasion, which received incredible reviews both locally and internationally. Uh, November 2019 saw Brendan release In The Moment, an album that was a game-changer in his musical direction, moving him strongly towards his roots of country music. 2020 saw the release of his fifth solo album, No Rush Today, which delivered the top 10 Australian music radio airplay project single entitled Jack and further cemented his direction towards the country music domain. Clearly not someone who likes to let the grass grow under his feet. Brendan's output of world standard songs has been nothing short of prolific and I'm certain his latest excellent offering is merely another precursor to many more great tracks to come. Something I'm certainly looking forward to with uh, much anticipation. I first interviewed Brendan back in November of 2020 and again in August of last year and I've been looking forward to catching up with him once more so I'm truly delighted to have him waiting patiently on the phone to have another chat with me today so let's bring him on air right now. Hello Brendan, how are you mate? Yeah, really good, Harry, and thanks for that amazing introduction. Oh, you're more than welcome. I'm renowned for my my amazing introduction. uh, Ask anyone. (laughs) 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 Oh, dear. No, look, I like like to let the people know who I'm I'm speaking to, and uh, uh, even if, uh, you know, it's someone like Lee Koenig or someone, you know, that's really well known, but... uh, uh, I, I think you're getting there. Uh, I really do. Uh, you know, your uh, your output has been absolutely amazing over the last uh, few years and uh, top quality stuff. So, you know, I, I think your success on the charts is uh, is bound to uh, put your name in uh, a lot of people's uh, recognition. Well, hopefully it's all positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, as do I. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and, uh, yeah. There are circles I can tell you where I'm not very highly thought of, but uh, I'm working on that. Um, <laughs> uh, look, it's uh, it, again welcome to the to the country club. It's always a, a, a genuine pleasure to have you on the show. Now, I imagine you're pretty happy with the incredible reception your new album has received. Uh, you know, when it debuted what a couple of days ago. Yeah, look, it's. <laughs> It's always one of those things, you put together an album and you, you put your heart and soul into it over a, a fair period of time, you know, sort of 18 to 24 months is the normal term for an album. Yep. And, and you know, you just hope that people like the songs that are on it or like some of the songs that are on it. And I've been very, very fortunate that after releasing a few singles off it, they've all gone to number one on the um, AMRAP chart, mm-hmm. um, which is just heartwarming and, and then when the album came out yeah it was the top selling Aussie album on the country iTunes chart so yeah and you know when you got people behind you like um, Keith Urban and Lee Kernigan and you're sitting in front of them even if it is just for a moment it just it makes the heart beat a little bit faster Harry oh, I'm sure it does <laughs> yeah I, uh, you know but um, look it's it's well deserved Brendan I, I, you know I mean um 
I guess it's hard for an artist to see his own work in the same light as you know people uh, who appreciate it and and um, consume it, if you want to uh, call it that. Um, but certainly, from my point of view, uh, the stuff you've been putting out has been absolutely amazing, and uh, you know, I've got so much of your stuff in my playlist now. Um, and I have noticed uh, because I, I often uh, I, I go to AMRAP at least once a week. Uh, to have a look and I always check out the charts and I have noticed that you spend a lot of time at number one um, a remarkable amount of time in fact compared to a lot of other artists that uh, occasionally make that mark but um, it, it, it's it's due to the, the quality of your work I think, I really do um, and it's good stuff so pat on the back mate, well done well I really appreciate it and you know I, I like to think that people are enjoying the music and and, and generally, if the DJs do download the music, it means they're going to play it, which means they do like and enjoy it. So, and as a as a songwriter, that's what you want. You want people to have the opportunity to hear your music when you, yep. as I said, put so much time and effort into it. And yep. Unfortunately, the commercial stations don't air independent musicians, but community radio does a wonderful job of giving independent artists like myself a bit of a hearing. It's part of our responsibility, the way I see it, to promote local talent, um, especially given that, as you say, uh, the commercial sector pretty much ignores it for the most part, which is sad, but you know, I hope we fill that gap. I, ho- I hope we, we bring to the market something that ad- would otherwise not get there. Well, absolutely. I, I'm 100% convinced that that's the case, Harry. You know, it's just the way it is. You know, yep. and even even the even the, the popular commercial artists don't get their new stuff played on radio a lot of times. That's true. You know, they they delve back into a, a hit album they had five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty years ago, mm. and they'll, they'll do an interview with a X, Y, Z, you know, star. And I say, and now for a hit from 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine the poor person on the other end of the line thinking, well, I've just released a new album. Can you please play a song off my new album? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, what's his name? John John Paul Young? Or, um, yeah. You know, he, he just released a, a, a new single and... Uh, uh, I, I don't think it's really going all that well, but, you know, uh, some of his back catalogue just keeps getting played, you know. Yeah, exactly right. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, uh, who knows why that happens? I, I, it's it's a mystery to me. But um, look, just on on just just as an aside, I uh, uh, checked out your Facebook page, and I think I mentioned this last time I spoke to you. But uh, I'm I'm amazed that you've got so many friends on your Facebook uh, that I that we have in common, like uh, Jed Zarb, Danny Young, Rene Diaz, and Peter Desky. Uh, who, who I've known for oh, donkey's ages. Um, you know, I've known Pete for so long, it's not funny. And uh, a very good friend of mine, Danny Stain. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we, we must move in similar circles, I think. Well, I think the music in, industry in general is, you know, fairly harmonious. And, and you know, you just, you, you might bump into someone, you know, one year at a gig or recording or whatever you might see him for two years but you know that's just how this industry rolls yeah that's true you know, so many associations over such a long period of time yeah yeah and and like you say you, most of the time you just bump into these people very occasionally you know but when you do it's it's you know it, it's nice you know it's um uh, yeah it's great to catch up with people even though you you know ha- you haven't been able to for such a long time like, I haven't seen Danny Stain for probably 18 months, you know, but, uh, you know, every time I do see him, it's, you know, it's quite an occasion. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I mean, the guys I record with, you know, um, Peter Maslin and, and Simon Hosford and a few, oh, a bunch of the other guys, you know, sometimes I won't see them for 12 months. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then I'll just be at a gig that they'll be at, or, you know, we'll be recording some music together, and it's, it's like we saw each other last week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah. You're right. You know, that, that's amazing how that happens. But I don't know. Anyway, uh, get back to uh, your song "Back Roads." Um, did you write that on your own, or was it co-write? No, no. Everything I've written so far on my six albums has been 100 percent me. Great. Um, yeah, but it, it, funny you say that because 
I, uh, I went to a writer's retreat at a place called Numble earlier this year, in okay. April, just before uh, the Tamworth, the rescheduled Tamworth Festival. Right. And uh, I wrote a, um, I wrote a bunch of songs, and, and two of them I've since gone into the studio and tracked for my seventh album. So, you know, it'll be out next year sometime. So that would be the first co-writes on any of my albums. Wow, you, you don't stand still, do you? I mean, you, you've only just brought out your sixth album, you're talking about the seventh one already. <laughs> Harry, I've got so many songs to record, I could record eight to ninth albums. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> well, look, I've got to say, you know, any of your albums come come out, I want one. There's no doubt about it. Cool. Um, yeah, like I say, I, I, I guess I've downloaded most of your stuff off AMRAP, but... Uh, Yep. Um, I, I, I can't remember. I think you might have sent me one of your CDs, uh, the last one maybe. Um, but in any case, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll, I'll send you a text um, All right. yep. w- with uh, the address. And if you can mail me uh, this latest CD, I'll be very grateful. Absolutely. No worries. Um, because I'm sure there's stuff on there I haven't heard that I want to put in my playlist. So, yep, that's the way it goes. Um, cool. But that's amazing, you know, like six albums and they're all singles, uh, all your own work, you know, without any co-writes. I mean, I talk to so many people nowadays and just about everything they put out is a co-write. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, sometimes co-writes strengthen a song, you know what I mean? But um, uh, I, I think it's quite an achievement when someone can do their own work and just put it out there without any help. And and it, it can be such good work too, you know what I mean? It doesn't suffer... Uh, just for being written by only one person, as as it is in your case. Um, but tell us, tell us what inspired you to write this uh, this song because uh, I've looked at the uh, the YouTube clip and uh, it's very. I think it tells the story. But you know, tell us it in, in your own words what inspired you to write uh, Backroads. Okay, well, it's um, it's from a long, long time ago when I was in my early twenties and. Um, I used to travel down to trade school from my small hometown in Capunda in South Australia. And it was about an hour's trip, maybe an hour, ten minutes. And it was 6 till 9 p.m. at night. Um, then I'd drive home, stop getting a bit of takeaway for dinner. And as soon as I got about halfway home, there's a place called Gawler in South Australia. Oh, I know it, yeah. Oh, do you? That's the yeah. end of the metro area. Yep. Near to my hometown in Capunda is all just open country road. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I used to sneak into the bottle and grab a couple of stubbies for the trip, you know. From okay, yeah, yeah. Home. <laughs> and uh, I remember distinctly one night I was driving home. It was a warm summer night and um, had the radio on, all that sort of stuff. And I, I just felt really happy, really peaceful, really at ease. And for some reason, I've always remembered that one trip home from trade school. Right. And basically that, you know, maybe it was because, you know, many, many years later I was going to write this song. So that's what it's about. Okay. Oh, well, it's a great story. Um, you know, there's sometimes the simple stuff is, is the most interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. But especially when it's a story that's well told, as is the case with this one. Um, you know, it's a great song, great, you know, nice little story and... I think it's one that a lot of people can relate to because I, I certainly can. I mean, I've driven, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't even imagine how many kilometres I've driven over my lifetime. Um, but they'd be, it'd be a considerable number, you know. So I have spent some time on the road, you know, driv, driven across the Nullarbor a couple of times, blah blah. Um, you, you know, uh, so yeah, I can relate to that song. I really can. Um, and I can relate to your your uh, inspiration to it. Uh, I can see myself in that situation exactly. You know. Mm. Um, yeah. When, when you're just enjoying the ride. You're yeah. Enjoying the drive. There's no stress. There's nobody ringing on the phone. There's there's you know. Yeah. Not many cars on the road. And you're just yeah. coming along, window down. Yep. You know, enjoying life, enjoying that particular time. Exactly, it's a buzz, you know, and there's no traffic, and you know, it, the roads, the road belongs to you, and it's it's yeah, it's a moment, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty, um, how 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 can people buy your music, or where can they go and buy your music? Tell us that. 
Okay, there's a bunch of places. Uh, well, they can um, they can jump on my website, which is brendanmcm.com, B-R-E-N-D-A-N-M-C-M.com. Right. If they'd like the old-fashioned hard copies, and they can order it off there, and I'll post it out to them. Right. Um, iTunes, of course, it's up on iTunes, so people can uh, jump on iTunes and download the album if they if they choose to support you know independent music. And and most artists would prefer, obviously, if if music was purchased rather than streamed. But yep. if people will just want to stream, they can also stream off uh, Apple Play and Spotify. There's a whole bunch of streaming platforms out there yep. these days. Yep. So it's available sort of in, in lots of lots of ways. Yep. As is uh, just about everyone's music nowadays. Um, yeah. You know, it's so different to uh, many years ago when I started buying music and you just walked, you know, went into Coles and bought a single, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, and then later on, you know, albums and so forth. But nowadays it's just, you know, um, so many different ways you can um, enjoy music and purchase it. And it's bewildering to me anyway. Uh, so, But anyway, uh, that's the way it goes. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, no, look, there's, there's positives about it. You know, there's yeah. about the internet and the way it distributes music because, you know, I get a lot of people overseas playing my music now. and, and that- Great. Had it been you know, in the days where there wasn't the streaming platforms and easy access to internet, which isn't that long ago, yep. um, you know, then those people wouldn't have heard my music. So there's some certainly some distinct benefits to the way music is um, shared these days. Yep. And as we all know, there's some there's some cons as well. Yeah, there always is. You know, to that, yes. there's um, you know, there's always pros and cons to pretty much everything in life. You know. You take you take the good with the bad, you know. Of course it is. Um, all righty, look, we're out of time, unfortunately, Brendan. Um, I wish I could uh, continue having a conversation with you. Uh, maybe one day, given that you're you know pretty local, uh, I can get you into the studio, and uh, you know for a full maybe two or three hours, um, and you know you can play some stuff uh, live to air if you're inclined to. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Happy to do that. Happy to do that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll put that on the back burner for now, but because we still got issues with uh, you know COVID and uh, all that, having people in the studio and stuff like that here. Uh, but um, that that's sort of starting to uh, dissipate. So um, you know when when it's when it's dissipated enough, I'll uh, I'll make that arrangement. I'll I'll, I'll get you in here and uh, you know we can have a proper conversation face to face. Sure, that'd be great. All right, excellent. All right, look, thanks for taking the time to have a chat with me on your Sunday afternoon, Brendan. Much appreciated. And uh, I am sure I will be talking to you again when the seventh album comes out. (laughs) If not before. (laughs) If not before, yes, indeed. All right, look, have a good day um, and uh, enjoy uh, what's left of it and um, look after yourself, you know, stay safe. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk to you again. All right, no worries. Thanks very much, Harry. All right, thank you, Brendan. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye.